Well, welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. In the last episode, we won a game of a very odd cards, and we're just about to come up against Ilana for the second round, so this is not going to end well. Let's give this a try, shall we? A list of who made it into the second round appeared on the scheme after a little while. Semi-final pairs have consisted of Elisa versus Xenia and Liliana versus me. A doom sigh escaped me. Liliana immediately took a seat in front of me. <sighs> she glared at me, grinning. How did you manage to outplay Lena? Cheated, perhaps. I'm not you. I just know how to play cards. At least that's what I wanted her to believe. And how could you outplay Shurik? <clears throat> Liliana waved her hand, showing how easy it was. I threatened to join his little club. She grinned yet again. Would you hold back too? Not a chance. <clears throat> That's such a good look for her, isn't it? Then I'll choose which card I give to you myself. Did you hear the rules? Ah, screw them. She looked like she really didn't care. Okay, but I choose the cards to give to you too. Deal. Okay, I can see that ending badly. It's going to be very hard for either of us to disrupt the other's hand this way because I'm going to give her cards I don't want and she's going to give me cards that she doesn't want and it's all going to come down to do I want the cards that she doesn't want? Inspired by my victory in the first round, I ventured upon this dangerous move. I could have argued, appealed to Electronic, and eventually had my own way, but... Hmm, my own way with Electronic, perhaps not. But somehow, I felt truly confident in the outcome of this round. Yes, we were breaking the rules, but I was in the same boat as Yana, Ilana. I looked up at Electronic. It's time to begin the semi-finals, he commanded. Oh, so manly. I carefully checked my cards, ensuring that Yolana couldn't see them. Okay, let's see what we have. We have a pair of eights. Um, we have an ace. We have a five, a two, and a three. Well, the pair of races eights are protected at least. Let's give up a two and see what we find. Okay, and we will take this card. Uh, let me pick another card, thank you very much. Can't pick another card. Oh, of course, I pick the card. Yes, okay, that's me being dim. She picks the card to give to me, so I have no choice but to take what she offers. Well, the king is a higher value card. I'm actually tempted just to give it straight back to her. Let's see what happens. All right, she gives me a different card, which is interesting. A seven, which is no use to me whatsoever. So let's give that back to her and see what we get. An ace. A pair of aces. Very nice. But she wins. She wins with a pair of sevens and a pair of kings. So, huh, so she gave me cards she had pairs of. Oh, she had three sevens. But still, still very weird. Very, very, very weird indeed. Oh, well, I lost. I won't lose any sleep over it. At least I won a single round. I left the canteen. It was still too early to sleep, and a short walk looked like a good idea. Where should I head to? 
Okay, so we can go to the beach. We can go to the sports area, the boathouse, the bus stop. The scene. The scene. Let's go to the scene. Why not? The events of the past day kept flashing brightly in my head. That stupid, stupid useless checklist, this foolish tournament. Tonight I had no intention of doing anything or talking to anybody. The investigation of my complicated situation was the last thing on earth I would do this evening. I headed to the north. At least where I thought it was. That's where I put it down last. It was a habit from my youth to go to the north. Go north, young man, they told me. No idea why. I liked this part of my hometown more than the southern districts. Travelling to the Black Sea resorts was never my thing either. Boundless forests and fields were much closer to me than beaches and barkans. Several minutes later, an open-air stage consisting of several wooden benches and a platform appeared before my eyes. I didn't walk up to them, they just appeared before my eyes. I climbed onto the stage. I started to sing. The hills are alive and they're getting high. No, let's not do that one. Um, so much varied musical equipment. Loudspeakers, a microphone stand, even a piano. I imagined a crowd of people in front of me, everyone screaming, shouting my name, myself blinded by the spotlights. I imagined a guitar in my hands and attempted to play a long and striking solo. I suppose I looked pretty funny from a stranger's point of view. A weird guy swinging his arms on the stage, jumping around like an ape and making faces. I hope no one else can see me here. Cue someone else. Hey. Piped up from somewhere above. I looked up and saw Iana hanging over a beam under the stage ceiling. And what are you doing here? I'm just... Denial is obviously futile. You saw it, didn't you? I said in frustration and turned away. Oh, I see a wasted guitar talent in you. I said nothing. Hey. Come on, don't frown. It was funny enough. She giggled. <laughs> funny enough, eh? I asked. Yep. Rihanna answered calmly. Come up here, dude. Where to? To me. I ain't gonna get up there. Don't even try to convince me. I ain't, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna get up there! No, let's not do that one. Okay. Not that I have a fear of heights. It's just climbing up there is pointless, isn't it? No, just get over here. I felt in my bones that something was going wrong, but still slowly headed her way. I, when I found myself standing under a llama, she cried out, Catch me! And jumped. Oh dear. Thousands of thoughts flashed through my mind in an instant. How would I catch her? Is it worth trying? What if she dies? What if she breaks something? What if she breaks something of mine? Why the hell does this happen to me? That's her own fault. No more fooling around. Wow, the number of thoughts come and go in the blink of an eye. In the meantime, that gusset is just getting closer. When sometimes many years are not enough to come up with a single idea. At last, logic and self-preservation instinct won the battle and I stepped back. Juliana landed gently, tumbled, instantly jumped to her feet and then looked at me with offence. Holy moly, um, why didn't you catch me? You didn't get hurt? I answered, shifting my glance. What if I did? But you didn't. What's up with you? Watch too many B-movies recently? So, don't you care about me? 
She grinned. Well, in this situation, certainly I do care. I'm flattered. Hey, don't get any ideas. Okay, okay. You're forgiven for the cards. And you are not. I had no time to finish the sentence. Ilana jumped off the stage and vanished into the dark of the night. Yep, one more childish trick from the silly girl. Sure, I was worrying about her for at the moment, as I would for anyone else in her place. After once again cursing Yolanda in my mind, I headed towards my cabin. For the first time today, I finally felt how tired I was. There was no light in the window, so Olga must have been sleeping already. Strangely enough, she waited for me yesterday. I entered the cabin, quietly stripped and laid on the bed. It was the wrong bed, fortunately she didn't notice. When you think about it, my situation hadn't got any clearer today. In fact, I'd spent the whole day doing useless stuff. I would have never even thought about doing something like this in the real world. Although I had plenty of time. How much time I would have here in total is still a mystery. Maybe an eternity, or maybe there are only a few minutes left. I just don't want to think about the past, about how I got to this camp. For the first time in a long while I felt really tired. Not only emotionally tired, but also physically tired, psychologically tired, and God knows how else tired. I just wanted everyone and everything to shove off, starting with my own thoughts. I wanted this mess to somehow resolve itself, or at least without my active participation. And what if I'm stuck here forever? Then I'll have to get used to it. So just like that, I, I'm not ready. Ahem. My consciousness slowly drifted away from me and it became progressively harder to concentrate on something distinct. Perhaps it's better to wait until tomorrow. I rolled over, snuggled up to Olga and fell asleep. And then nothing. Day three. We survived. Yolanda's gusset. We should be proud of ourselves. The night left a feeling of anxiety behind. I woke up exhausted both physically and mentally. It happens to me all the time. You see incredibly lucid Im images in your dream. As if you fell into a Hollywood blockbuster with a plot full of twists well-paid actors, and multi-billion dollar visual effects. And then you wake in the morning without remembering a thing. That's what I was trying to do, to restore the images shown by my relaxed brain, but that part of my memory was empty, either archived or formatted completely. It's 7am according to the clock. I seem to be an early bird today. Olga was still sleeping, wrap, wrapping tightly in her blanket. Wrapping so tightly in a hot summer. Mm. I got up, stretched, and went to the mirror to have a look at myself. I'd better shave. Strange idea. Before, twice a month was enough, but now nothing depends on the way I look. I haven't found a razor anyway. Why do I even need it if I look like I'm 17 at most? So, breakfast can't start earlier than 9am and this means I have plenty of time. Which I can spend walking and washing for example. The water didn't seem as ice cold as the previous day. On the contrary, its refreshing coolness helped me brace up and come back to reality. Whether all these events could be called real. The tooth powder didn't seem to be such an outdated thing. A quick thought struck me that it's not that different from toothpaste. I haven't seen that in years, thinking about it. When I returned to the cabin, Olga was already up. Funny enough, looking at her, so was I. She was standing in front of the mirror and fixing her hair. It didn't look broken to me, but... 
Good morning, Semyon. Morning. Because of a lack of sleep, my head was still singing and my thoughts were all jumbled together. However, I didn't regret waking up instead of my usual habit of sleeping in for two or three hours more. How come you got up so early? Well, I didn't want you to notice I was sleeping with my head rested on your breast. It just happened. And no neckerchief again. Let me. I'll do it myself. It's not a big deal. On my way to the canteen. I don't think so. Sorry about that. I don't think so. Do it now. Did you forget about the lineup before breakfast? How could I ever forget? And what's the lineup going to be about today? We'll just discuss the agenda for today. So what's the agenda? Frankly speaking, I didn't care for what might be on the agenda or for our courageous pioneer troop. I was mostly introduced, interested in where our brave leader would send my our little pioneer army for the following 12 to 15 hours. Maybe I could manage to avoid enemy locations. You'll find out. at the lineup. She gave me a wily smile. Wily. Wily. Olga, you know, my stomach is getting upset. I'd rather... Well, you know... I believe it's okay to miss the lineup once. It could get nasty if I fail to control it right there. Where did all this courage come from? You have five more minutes. You will never leave the lineup. I'm afraid I need more time. Could you tell me right now, please? Sure, I'll try, but just in case it goes down. Oh, fine. On our list today is cleaning the camp locations, organizing the books in the library, some other minor tasks. And, of course, we have a ball in the evening. Watch yourself. You must take part in all the camp activities today. You bet. Definitely, and now I'd rather... Come on, let's hit the road. It looked at me funny. I came out of the cabin and hid in the bushes behind it, waiting for Olga to leave. Actually, I didn't have any particular reason to behave this way, but the voice within me kept telling me that I had nothing to do with the lineup. After the camp leader left, I went back to the cabin and decided to wait for breakfast there. Well, I'm not planning on taking part in community life today. Cleaning and organising? That's not what someone in my situation should be doing. Two days have passed, and I'm still right where I started. All the residents seemed to be perfectly ordinary people. They weren't involved in any conspiracy. They weren't communicating with aliens and had no idea about time warps. Of course, each of them is a bit peculiar, but those peculiarities do not seem out of line at all. Moreover, if I'd met any of those pioneers in my familiar world, I wouldn't suspect anything gone wrong. They seem to be even more normal and natural than, let's say, yours truly. This line of reasoning was quite logical. The illogical part was the absence of answers. Ordinary people, in an extraordinary place. I'd heard and seen that already somewhere. Dozens of pioneers, or even more, live their familiar lives and do their regular stuff day by day. They don't understand what the world around them is not what it looks like. Okay. But this is their point of view. As for me, I'm not acquainted with the world of the Sovinok camp and its residents, even if they seem to behave the way normal people would under the same circumstances. I have to decide here and now. Are those people involved in what's happening to me? Can they give me any answers? Or do I have to seek the truth from somewhere else? It seems I overdid it a bit with the thinking. There's no usual crowd of hungry pioneers near the canteen. 
or even inside the canteen. Most of them might have tried the Yolana special. Most of them probably had their breakfasts before 9 a.m. That's even better. Two's company, three's a crowd. Lena was sitting in the farthest corner of the canteen, lazily picking with a fork at an amorphous lump that vaguely resembled porridge. Having breakfast with her seems like a good idea. We can have a chat in peace. Or at least, try to have one. I was on the way to a table when suddenly someone grabbed me by the sleeve. Genia, the librarian. <laughs> it will be an income. You need to talk. <sighs> Ellipsis. What are you waiting for? I was a bit confused. Pardon, isn't this a bit too sudden? <sighs> What's wrong? Get your meal and sit down. I suppose that she considers her behaviour completely normal. Oh, 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 shy Ellen or sexy librarian. Let's do the librarian. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I accepted the invitation. What if I can learn something new? She's such a bookworm. A minute later, I was sitting in front of Genia with a tray and a simple meal of porridge, two eggs, four pieces of white bread, a sausage, and a glass of compote. Bon appetit! Ugh, thanks. I decided to act as politely as I could, and also eat more neatly, without chomping and spilling crumbs of food or drops of compote. So, what do you want to talk about? Ugh, today, at the library. I wasn't listening from this point onward. I immediately recalled Olga's words about the scheduled events for today. Don't forget. Oh, what? I said. Don't forget to visit the library after lunch. Oh, excuse me, that triggered a real... <laughs> that triggered a real yawn. <laughs> what for? Oh, were you even listening? Nope. I admitted honestly. Genia's face turned red, then appeared green, then took a soft purple color. Her left eyebrow flashed, puce repeatedly, and then settled down. Say, after lunch, you, me, this gimp costume, in the library, got it dunce? Dunce? What kind of curse is that? Though, a pioneer must never use a curse word. How could I forget this rule? Oh, yeah, sure, I apologize. Of course, I'll be there. Actually, I wasn't planning on going anywhere, but if you want to make someone speak, you need to sacrifice a bit first. By the way, what year is it now? I've totally lost count. I decided to play fair. She looked at me perplexedly for a moment and answered, Have you gone completely bananas? Honestly, that's how I felt for the last few days. Genia didn't reply. So, what year is it? I smiled kindly. Listen, why don't you visit the infirmary? Will they tell me what year it is there? Oh, certainly. <laughs> and even more. Genia stood up and headed to the exit. Wait, you didn't finish your meal. But it looks like she won't turn back. I was finishing chewing on the sausage, which tasted like a twisted pear cable. I wonder if they have internet access here. I guess not. A pioneer sitting at the table noticed me talking to myself and stared at me. I smiled and waved to him in return. After such a friendly greeting, he, for some reason, left the canteen quickly without finishing his breakfast. Done with food. It's time to search for some clues. Sometime later, I came to the infirmary, and what happened inside? We will find out next episode. Okay, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. The card game was a bit of a bust, but quite frankly, the odds were against us there. Though I do find it very amusing that I basically handed her back the winning cards. That was very odd. But anyway... I've been Simon Parsons, this has been Everlasting Summer, 
Thank you and good night.